Hello, Bezel Triple Three here. Are the four Gospels we find in the New Testament reliable historical documents? The historical documents? Yes, reliable historical documents. I want to talk about the reliability of the Gospels that we find in the New Testament. If you look at the Gospels in a Bible, you will see them right at the beginning of the New Testament with an author's name attached to them, with chapters and verses, and even the words of Jesus in red sometimes. But how can we know that we are reading what the authors actually wrote so long ago? I want to submit that we can be sure that these four Gospels are indeed reliable historical documents. Historical documents? Yes, historical documents that can be trusted. Now, you might be saying to yourself, he just made a bold statement. Well, perhaps. But allow me to give some reasons why I think the Gospels are reliable historical documents. Historical documents. Yes, historical documents. First, we have the manuscript evidence. We have more than 3,000 or so Greek manuscripts in existence today, portions of which date back to the second century. There are simply no other writings in antiquity that can even come close. Second, there are less than 3% of the Gospels in which we have words or phrases that may be in question as to whether or not they were in the original autographs. And that 3% has nothing to do with major doctrine of the Christian faith. Third, the agreement as to the content of the earliest manuscripts among critical scholars of all stripes, both conservative and liberal, is extraordinary. This means that when you are reading a gospel account in the New Testament, you are getting the words of the original author, translated, of course, of a reliable historical document. A uh, historical document? Yes, a historical document. Now, when were the gospels written? Now, there's a lot of Gospels out there. The Nagamati Library, for instance, contains the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Philip, the Gospel of the Egyptians, the Gospel of Truth, and so on. And then we have the New Testament Apocrypha, full of Gospels as well. But all these Gospels that we just mentioned were written somewhere in the 2nd and even 3rd century. Now, by contrast, most New Testament scholars would date the four Gospels within 30 to 60 years after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Now, we might think that that's still a large amount of time, but actually, with documents of antiquity, it's almost a heartbeat or just a blink. Uh, so close are the documents written to the time of the actual events. And being closer to the actual events normally, most certainly, would increase the trustworthiness that would make these reliable historical documents. The historical documents. Yes, historical documents. Now, where did the writers of the Gospels get the information they wrote down? There are two kinds of sources that the writers would have used, one written, the other oral. First, let's look at the written sources. The first chapter of Luke is very helpful here because it tells us about both of these kinds of sources. But first, the written. Uh, in Luke chapter 1, we read that many have undertaken to set down an orderly account. The, the account of the life and, and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This setting down implies writing. Uh, Mark may have been used by Luke as a source as well as others. Uh, I said Mark because Mark, we know, is the earliest written gospel. And perhaps you've heard of the Q material. Q is the, um, the letter in the German alphabet uh, that, that uh, begins the word quell, which means source, and that's where they got Q material from. Um, so, the, and, and Q is just kind of a framework that scholars have come up that comprise a couple hundred sayings of, of Jesus that come from earlier uh, written sources. Um, now, and again, these written sources would have dated back even earlier than the Gospels themselves. Another reason that we can trust the Gospels as reliable historical documents. Historical documents. Yes, historical documents. Now, as for the oral sources, let's go back to Luke chapter 1. He writes, They, 
talking about the oral accounts, were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. This handing on is a Greek term for the passing on of oral information. These who handed on the information would have surely been Jesus' disciples and those who followed Jesus as he was preaching and teaching and performing miracles. We find the same phrase, handing on or handed on, used by Paul in 1 Corinthians 15. Now, if Paul was writing 1 Corinthians only about 20 years after the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, then the information he was passing on in his letter concerning the gospel of Jesus would have been even earlier and closer to the actual events. One more reason why we can trust the gospels as reliable historical documents. Historical documents. Yep, historical documents. Now, I realize that we've only scratched the surface, and there's a myriad of other topics uh, that we could talk about, but in the minutes we have left, I want to give you just a few uh, concluding thoughts regarding the reliability of these historical documents. Historical documents? Yes, historical documents. One, that the writers of the Gospels either knew Jesus personally, as is traditionally thought of Matthew and John, or knew people who knew Jesus personally, as in Mark and Luke. Two, that the four Gospels agree in the essential elements of their biographies of Jesus, his life, his ministry, and especially uh, his death, which comprises the, uh, the lion's share of each of the Gospel accounts. There are variations, I'll admit that, uh, but no contradictions, just different accounts, different eyewitness accounts of what actually took place. Three, that the writers, yes, were biased in their view of Jesus. But I think that this is a fact that would motivate them to um, preserve the truth of what they were writing concerning his words and works because they believed that Jesus was the Son of God and believed that he was ushering in the kingdom of heaven and believed that what you do with Jesus will determine your eternal destination. So they wanted to make sure they got it right. And four, that the Gospels portray the founders of the Christian church in a less than favorable light. The disciples are seen to be slow to understand lacking in faith, selfish, prideful, and cowardly. If you're starting a religion, you don't do that to the leaders of this religion. You make them look good, not bad. Um, so these are just some thoughts that I've had. I want you to consider just the things that I've said, but look more deeply. Do some study on your own. A lot of what I've gotten here uh, to present to you came from a book called Can We Trust the Gospels by Dr. Mark D. Roberts. I highly recommend that book to you. Also, he has a website that has a, just a, a, a bowl full of information, not only regarding the Gospels, but a lot of other things. So if you're not a Christian, take a better look at Jesus. Uh, your eternal destiny uh, depends on what you do with him. And if you are a Christian, be encouraged and be strengthened in your face knowing that you have good evidence to believe what you believe, that the Gospels represent reliable, historical documents. No, not, not historical documents. Yes, historical documents.